Hi all, uh, welcome to the next uh, practical session of uh, embedded software testing and uh, today we will try to go through a session about uh, code warrior uh, uh, in terms of creating a project and uh, how to debug uh, because we know in uh, dynamic testing we need to execute the embedded software onto the target using a equipment called IDE, so we have integrated development environment, so this is basically used for connecting the embedded target with the help of a target connectors such as JTAG or any of the debugger reports, BDMs etc. Then we have the actual target and we have the compiler built into the code warrior code IDE, code warrior is basically an IDE and we will try to understand how we can use the debugger. So basically with the help of that we can see try to set the breakpoints, stop it, view memory and monitor the variables, uh, how to watch the memory, modify. So like this there are uh, several aspects of that, we will try to study that in a couple of sessions. Today we will try to go through a video of uh, Code Warrior, uh, basically we have Code Warrior connected to a microcontroller, so most of these uh, free scale microcontrollers they have uh, Uh, code warrior uh, used especially uh, in their initial series of HC 08, HC 12 series processors, these are uh, popular processors uh, since almost a couple of decades, uh, they are using on the uh, automotive, industrial and uh, uh, such microcontroller applications, so let us try to understand uh, how to create a project with an example demonstration, learn how to debug the code, learn how to set the breakpoint and how to watch the memory, so these are some of the exercises we will try to understand and we will continue the exercise in the next session, okay. So basically these videos are all from one of the Uh, embedded uh, expert videos called processor expert software, so this series we are referring to understand uh, so in terms of the lab session okay, okay. so this uh, YouTube is uh, video is from uh, processor expert software series, we will just basically try to go through and uh, in the future session we will try to understand how it works. So it is called as a kinetic processor socket with the help of that we will try to understand overview of the code warrior tool, okay. So we will begin with an example project workspace, this is a window you can see the code warrior project workspace where we have uh, components, uh, categories, code warrior project listed here and uh, uh, in terms of uh, managing the projects, uh, build settings, debugging and all that we can see here, we can see the console where uh, debugging output will be provided. So we will try to open an example project, so we will click the import project and uh, there is a import project uh, in some of the repository, so we have a import window, we can browse through the group, browse through the example project, here we have one uh, I2C uh, project we have, we will try to go through that and uh, we will uh, select that, use it, you can see 
the project uh, got selected in the left hand side where it lists the file names with uh, the different folders. So, so we I am trying to build the project. Uh, what he is saying in terms of uh, the processor expert. Uh, this is a project file. You open the P file. This is a project. Processor expert uh, project file. You can see there are several uh, options coming up in terms of uh, configuration like flash, memory, and the components. What you want to use it in the project. So you can see these are basically the registers that are part of the processor. You can see that internal oscillator, clocks, and all that. These are basically the components of the processor. Uh, what this does is the processor expert that does this, it will have libraries to populate those registers and ask user to select uh, the CPU, external, internal peripherals, devices, register settings, interrupts, clocks and all the stuff. So with the help of that uh, we can choose these options and build the project. Okay, so these are some of the categories that. Uh, uh, the components library that is built in the processor expert of the code warrior where you can see the board support information CPU external devices CPU internal peripherals logical device drivers if uh, the board has a connection in terms of I2C or server then we have a operating system in terms of a small kernel or scheduler then we have the software or the software application configuration. So you can see in closely some of the views. So there is one OS selected as MC X light. Other components you can select in terms of multiple tasks. What you want to have it? So there are several tasks underneath this OS components. So we are just trying to understand how the UI works, so what components are used in the MQAX OS that is built as part of the browser expert. So these are several methods within the components. You want you can configure it. There is one library. It is being selected here uh, in this, and uh, for that library, TSS uh, I. You can see the library having uh, uh, the different complex components of that library can be selected or deselected or used. So basically with the help of that the project is built okay so you can see logical device drivers like in terms of communication converter many drivers are there from multiple peripherals of the processor you can choose like timer what should have a timer you want to have so this basically this video is for building the project similarly we can use it for testing in terms of what is used after loading this project or we use for development and see what configuration it is using and what is the behavior something like a watchdog we have and you can see the source we can uh, remove if you do not want to have that component. So what processor expert does is generates the code for this and builds the project you can click on the generate button and it will generate the whole project okay so we will try to study another project 
similarly created uh, in uh, code warrior this is a more simpler one we will try to study this uh, what it does okay so today uh, in terms of uh, code warrior development studio how it works this uh, this video should help there is a workspace we can select it in terms of a lab uh, example path so, or you can create a directory name it and uh, you can store uh, projects in that folder called a workspace so workspace will have one or more projects will be available but better to have a separate workspace uh, for each project so if there are uh, complicated projects having multiple uh, files and all that so it is uh, it is able to have one workspace and only that you can have multiple projects similarly you can build a test project having instrumented code and for the unit which you are interested to feed more values configure the code and test it what is the behavior of that on the target we can build the project this way okay the code warrior studio editing setup is the first page basic thing is called as a perspective it's a set of different projects settings we can see So you can use this uh, welcome screen to create a new project. So you can click that a new project wizard, and you can name the project here for the microcontroller unit that is being specified here. You can call it as a lab one. You can press next, and you can choose what sort of a board we have. Uh, and we process like a c s v i eight call for y one v two v three so one of these process we can select it cold fire v one is being can use it is a family of all the cold fire processors from model one free scale so there is a processor called m c f fifty one c one one twenty eight that is being selected and uh, so what sort of a connection that we have with the end target from this IDE, we can select it. So there are different options like USB based medium debugger or a serial port or a TCP IP or any JTAG etc. So PND USB medium melting is used here. You can have also open source medium. Uh, which is already available on the evaluation board. So any files you want to add, you can add it here. So cold fire build options, uh, you can set it here. What sort of a build you want to have? You want to have uh, C plus plus support. You want to enable processor macro, which helps porting code from uh, any scale down process, something like HCS uh, uh, to this cold fire. So no sorry, no porting is selected here. Uh, any input output uh, in terms of uh, printf statements you want to have a console or no console any floating point support you need uh, any optimization or easier debug etc all these options part of the build we need to select so that the, the embedded software program is getting built okay next uh, uh, we have a rapid application development in terms of uh, building the entire uh, Workspace from the project, we can select uh, either device initialization or the IDE itself using that processor expert. What we have seen earlier, like in terms of configuring the various values of the registers, the devices, and all that. Either you can ask a processor expert to initialize, or uh, you yourself can initialize, or none of them you can. Use. So here it is not used the processor expert. It is no, uh, this is used. No option is used on the market. Okay. Now, this lab uh, one project example. 
you can see there are different folders that got created in terms of project settings, library, including files and sources. So you can see that view of the C C on the right hand side of the top side. So you can just go ahead and select the project window underneath that you can build the project with build all so it is going to build the entire form and control B or build all you can use then you are going to have a create a debug configuration how you want to debug this project after you have build or compile the project yes. here with this window you can have the debug configuration there is a example code warrior download you wish to have that is why this has been chosen so basically the program what we have built is trying to get flashed onto the board you can see that the L format text move all in the format so got generated out of that build what we have done in earlier step same thing can be flashed onto the target board <coughs> and uh, you can uh, directly go for the debug uh, option it will automatically open the debug uh, perspective uh, here you can see that uh, right hand side now it is uh, downloading onto the target it is burning into the flash and you can see the debug window showing the next window after it is loaded and here you can see uh, the debug uh, uh, the operations so what are the things that we have here you can see the file which file it is being currently programmed or currently being uh, executed you can see the console in terms of input output you can see the disassembly of that uh, main file what you have seen the source here so the executable code you can see just a simple code main interrupts in a for loop some reset watch dog is getting then this is why because it has a watch dog circuitry and the watch dog should be again and again satisfied so that no reset is going to happen so any embedded software you know that it should be called in a while one or for one for one loop while one while one is preferred However, in this example, you can see a yeah, for loop. So this is the project, and you can see you can click the uh, resume option. You can use now the program is running on the board. You can pause it. It will show where it where it is stopped and where it is running. You can see the assembly of the source where the project is being executed. Executed. So it is continuously running around the for loop. You can resume it. You can you can stop or terminate the project execution. You can disconnect the target uh, which is connected to this IDE uh, debugger environment. What uh, happens uh, when you disconnect is because you have flashed, and uh, in earlier option in that you resume or execute. So though you have uh, disconnected. Actually, you have flashed the program and asking it to run independently. It will keep on running on the target, but the BDM or the target that is being connected will no will not have any debug option available. So. So here we have uh, the IDE, here we have that uh, BDM debugger uh, module and actual target is here. So what we try to do here is with this IDE we try to load the 
example uh, program and we have flashed onto the flash circuitry of the target board and uh, we said uh, so let it run and we disconnected the target still the target board is running similarly we can connect it back and start executing it. Okay, so now we can see the source code C C plus plus view where the original source is being displayed. If you want, you can add a code. For example, let's see. Uh, there is a code getting added. This is a variable called counter is added here, and uh, in the for loop, uh, there is a counter that is getting implemented in the for loop. So you save it with control S then since you have changed the source you need to rebuild the first space so it will be rebuilt. So you have the debug connection set up then you can switch over to the debugger you can you can see that it is getting downloaded out the, uh, the debugger and the target this is the progress it shows once it is done. As it was showing earlier for us with a new code, you can see that new code is getting displayed here, and this is assembly of the same will be shown here. And you can see that debugger is showing this latest program. Okay. Now this window shows the different stack trace in terms of what has been called first, second what has been called like a call trace it is showing. So you can see that what is being used if you click that startup that is what before remain is getting called the basic startup is being used and the assembly of that is being used usually the startup protein is written in assembly all that the basic work in terms of processor installation, cache translation look ahead buffer flash to run copy all that instructions will be there part of the startup in any embedded software before the main is actually getting called or executed. You can see that there is a main main it has come so there is a execution of this there is a counter you can see which we have used it is called a global variable some values being displayed since we are continuously pre implementing it in every cycle. So there are about uh, 3 lakh uh, values that got updated and also you can see the memory where this counter is lying on the target. We can run again this project you can see you can see the counter getting updated or incremented you can also see by moving the cursor on the particular variable of the of the counter. You can also hover it over that declaration as well you can see the values of that what is being shown with so we can see the values of the variables and do the debugging. So now we can try to set a break point similar one and try to see what is going on in each cycle. You have to double click here this is a pane where P A N E pane where you can click and see that breakpoint is being enabled and when you execute it is going to stop at the breakpoint. You can see every run it is being clicked here and it is going to stop because we have set the breakpoint every time the breakpoint is hit you can see the counter is getting incremented right. So if you remove the breakpoint by double clicking and run it and you can go to the breakpoint window you can disable it with this option and run it will run a free execution and while doing the execution or when you have stopped it you can modify the value in memory or the location what you have seen this will be useful for testing how the behavior of the program to, show, to ensure that uh, different aspects of the project uh, variables how it is getting used and synced. So that is what the example shows you can have a breakpoint in different places like this 
some of the embedded systems will allow three hardware breakpoints and uh, unlimited uh, software breakpoints. Here, hardware breakpoint means the breakpoints that are getting uh, loaded uh, from the target uh, directly when the target is executed with the actual uh, target uh, memory and the flash, which is mapped to the execution uh, program of the RAM. So you see that value being changed from something to zero, so that the new variable value is being loaded. Zero is being loaded. You can create a watch point, toggle watch point. You can click it here, and the counter. You want to have a watch, and breakpoint is enabled here, and the properties. Condition we can put for the watch point. Uh, the counter when it reaches ten, we should be able to stop and see the watch point. It's zero now, so we are going to resume it, and in a moment it's going to show the value of ten, and it has hit right. We can set it back to zero and execute continuously. It will be incremented continuously, and it stops at ten. We can take it out again and try to Now we can see the variable is getting updated with uh, so this is what uh, the basic debugging aspects of the uh, code warrior uh, one of the uh, popular uh, debugger that is being used in the industry. So in the next session we will try to understand the next type of code warrior debugging for different process settings okay so in the next video we will try to understand another type of project creation and here the same code warrior with a different version is being tried to create uh, new project and uh, let's try to uh, see the different options like you can create a new project you can load the existing project load previous project and then getting started some tutorials are also there with examples okay so we will try to create a new project click on that new project here you can see uh, this code over here supporting this sort of a uh, Processor family like HC08, HC08, RS08, RS08, Qualifier. These are basically different microcontrollers. We can choose. Yeah, it will give a basic information about the processor in this and the connections that are used. So we can have multiple connections for different processors. Okay, one of the HC08 will try to select. We can see in the window video. So the cross of that got selected is MC six eight HC nine zero eight sixteen. So in this we can have a connection something like emulator or PND multi-link or mono zero eight interface or full chip simulation, where simulation is done without the target connection. End of this processor if you select same option will be there. Then we can have languages. What you want to have, have like this project to be created, like in C, C++, assembly or relocated assembly, some different platform. So C is being selected here. The project name. It usually the microcontroller project under Freescale will be dot mcp. We select the folder. So C is selected here.
if you want a absolute assembly where a pure assembly is used for the entire project you can select like that this example uh, the example uh, assembly project or let's try to see because embedded software will also have a uh, assembly code so we may need to test it so in order to do that we need to understand uh, how the assembly code is being organized into the embedded project so there is some led project that is being created here so any files that you want to have added you can add it in that folder so any rapid application development option you want or us initialization you want to have your own or project processor expert you want to select for assembly it is not there that option so none is selected here So now the project is being created. You can see here the source main dot asm project libraries and all being displayed here. So this is a debugger window on the left hand side where all different debug options are available. So you double click on that main dot assembly and see on the right hand side there is the assembly that is being displayed. So it includes the two libraries. I go to I dot inc. I see two libraries. Is another process specific library also there. You can see that. I try to see all the microcontroller related memory map interpreters and all that are defined here in this library. We can use any of these variables in order to set the values. Let's see what's going to be used. Okay. Now main dot c, you can see main dot c. You can see that main dot c being used, and that main dot c includes the other library included. As usual, we have in a c similar to that. Okay. You can see the assembly and disassembly on the front side. You can see the actual source, and you can see that the CPU cycles how much it is being used, clock pointer, accumulator, status registers, status of the particular microcontroller being displayed here. And you can see the memory that is being used. Each memory address is 16 bit. That uh, specific memory addresses with that MSB first and LSB last being displayed here, and uh, we can have a continuation of that single step. You want to have you can have step out, step in, hold, and final execution on the target. We can do we can do the reset here. The single step we can do. You can see step by step. The lines have been executed. You can set the breakpoint, modify any of these values for any testing that you want to have, and run it. So, assembly project is being used in the code warrior. You can see the breakpoints if you want to set. For a particular line, you can set it and watch the accumulator what value is coming. Uh, especially this assembly debugging is useful when you want to have a boot software or embedded testing related things where different registers you want to verify uh, with the right click options. You can set the breakpoint and watch window, you can see that uh, run till cursor, you can have that with that value modified and see the behavior of the CPU what is going to happen. 
So basically, load store set sort of instructions will be there, and the stack pointer has the FF, and it is loaded in the memory. So let's try to understand. Uh, uh, let's try to understand the next type of a project, how that is being uh, debugged and used. This is a K20 family project is being uh, processor family is being used, particularly K and K20 and 28. So it depends on the development rate, whatever you have, that particular processor needs to be selected. Uh, you can see. With several options like we have seen last time, uh, uh, the PND USB multilink universal uh, connection is being used. If you want to use the onboard uh, JTAG, want to use open source, you can use. Here it is being used. So you can select any of this language. Here in this project, device initialization is being used. You want to add uh, any files into the project? You can search with this click option. If you want to copy that files into the project, you can use this option. If you want to create a main.c operation, you can select that. <coughs> So the environment is being created here. You can see that target CPU project K20 bareboard. So under sources, you can see there is a couple of C files and there is a header. There is a installation code generated automatically. You can see the MCU unit dot C in the header file. It's being generated by the tool itself. So you should not modify this basically. In dot C, you can see this is a library studio used. Uh, there is a simple counter, similar to what we have seen earlier, being used here. You can build with this uh, hammer option. This is a drop down in terms of uh, internal flash. You want to do or internal RAM? You know the difference. Like flash is the permanent storage. RAM is the one that is going to when it is power up. We can uh, yes, yeah, the selection is RAM here, and uh, it's being run and debug here with this option. Code warrior connect or download, select one of the options and debug it. So it will switch to the uh, debug perspective here. See the multiple windows like what we have seen earlier in terms of the trace and source and the disassembly. So, so there's a target that is being plugged in here, and it is ready to start here. We say you can see there's a breakpoint being set here. This counter the breakpoint is being used here. This is being run now. Yeah. 
there are stepping commands like step in, step out, step return, step return from the function. You can see there is a breakpoint counter plus plus the project has stopped here. Counter value you can see it here. Again, you run it here. Uh, you can see that counter value is implemented because continuously it is getting uh, called by the program. This is a code warrior at ten point two version that is being used. Okay, so this is how we can use the debugger so for loading the project, reusing the project, modifying, adding the files, setting the breakpoint, uh, making the changes into the counter or the variables, and watched in the memory. Likewise, we can have it, and we can scale it up for complex projects this way. Okay, so we'll continue in the next session in terms of more uh, exercises. Until then, see you. Thank you. Bye bye.